Hi, it's Luke from Wild Pro. Today, I'm here with part two of our TIG 200 series. I'm going to show you how to set up all your cables and accessories with this machine so you're ready to weld. First, I'd like to show you how to set up for stick or MMA mode. The first thing you'll want to do is go ahead and locate your stinger or your electrode holder. When we stick weld, we typically want our polarity to be DC electrode positive. That would mean that our electrode holder would be our positive connection. So to connect your stinger, go ahead and take the dense connector, line up the little tab on the connector with the slot in the lug in the machine. Insert the connector into the machine and rotate clockwise about half a turn. Make sure this connection is secure. Next, let's go ahead and connect our ground clamp. If our electrode holder is connected to the positive terminal, our ground clamp will be connected to the negative terminal. Using the same technique as before, go ahead and twist this connector in. Now our electrode holder and our ground clamp are connected to our machine. Go ahead and turn the little red switch on the back of your machine to energize it. In the upper left corner of your display, there's a selector button. This will allow you to change between MMA and TIG mode. With the MMA mode selected, you'll notice an amperage readout on the screen. This is the amperage output to your electrode. The desired current can be changed using the large selector dial on the front of the machine. With our leads connected and everything set up on the machine, we're pretty much ready to stick weld. Next, let's go ahead and set up for TIG mode. I've gone ahead and removed our electrode holder from the front lug on the machine. I've left the ground clamp connected. But when we weld with TIG, we need to change our polarity to DC electrode negative. In order to achieve this, we'll need to move our ground clamp over to our positive lug. Go ahead and do that now. Now that your ground clamp is connected to the positive lug, when we connect our TIG torch, the electrode will become the negative end, or DC electrode negative. Your TIG torch came with a protective cover. Let's go ahead and put that on right now. I've gone ahead and unzipped all but about three inches of the end of this protective cover. I don't want to unzip it all the way because it might be difficult to get that zipper back in. I like to start at the beginning of the zipper and insert my TIG torch. What this will do is it will leave the hanging zipper end down by the machine so it's not jingling around by my hand. Once your torch is through the end of the protective cover, go ahead and stick the red hose inside and zip this all the way down. When you're finished installing that protective cover, your torch will be protected all the way up to the end and the same with your hose that goes to the machine. Next, take this brass connector, thread it onto the front of the machine where it shows the picture of the TIG torch. Be sure to tighten this connection with a wrench, but don't over tighten it, it's just a brass fitting. With our TIG torch and our ground clamp hooked up, we're well on our way, but TIG requires a few more connections. Locate the double-ended gas hose that came with your welder. This hose will take us from the flow meter on our argon bottle to the inlet on the back of the machine. Go ahead and locate the connection on the back of your machine that says AR for argon. Thread one of the ends of this hose into that connection. Again, you'll want to tighten this with a wrench, but don't over tighten. With one end of our hose connected to our machine, we'll now hook the other end to the flow meter. The flow meter came with a double-ended coupler. You'll need to install this before installing the hose. After your coupler is on your flow meter, go ahead and insert the other end of the hose into the bottom of the flow meter. Secure this connection with a wrench. Now that our gas hose is hooked up to the machine, let's install the flow meter on the argon cylinder. It's important when installing the flow meter that you point it vertically. If it's off camber a few degrees, it can change the way the ball moves with gas flow. Now that our gas is connected, let's go ahead and hook up the foot pedal. I've already placed my foot pedal down under the table where I like it. Locate the five prong connector that goes into the front of the machine for the foot pedal. There's a groove on this connector, so make sure that lines up and then tighten the external ring clockwise. Last but not least, we're going to set up the TIG torch. 
With your TIG torch in your non-dominant hand, locate your collet body. This is the thicker of the two copper pieces. Now, this collet body will thread in on this white heat shield end of the torch. There are knurlings on this collet body to help you tighten it down by hand. Don't put a wrench on here. You could ruin the threads inside the torch. Once your collet body is installed, go ahead and install the collet from the back side. The collet is the thinner, smaller copper piece. This will be what secures your tungsten inside of your torch. The collet will drop in from the back side of the torch and rest in the collet body. With the collet inside of the torch, go ahead and install the back cap or the stem, but don't tighten it just yet. Your TIG 200 came with a few different size gas cups. Go ahead and pick up the size 6. We're going to be starting with this one. You'll thread the gas cup over the collet body on the insulated end of the torch. Thread this down until it's tight. Now that our TIG torch is fully assembled, we can go ahead and insert our tungsten. Now, before we can weld with this tungsten, it needs to be ground. I'll show you how to do this in part three of the TIG 200 video when we start welding. For now, you can go ahead and insert the tungsten painted end first. It slides in through the collet body and up into the stem. We don't want our tungsten to extend any further beyond the gas cup than the diameter of the orifice in the gas cup. We'll talk a little more about this in the next video, but if your tungsten is out too far, it can cause erosion, porosity, and other weld contamination. Thank you for tuning in to part two of the TIG 200 series. Please take a minute and hit the subscribe button. You'll want to be a part of what we're doing. Here at WeldPro, we're committed to releasing lots of tutorial and how-to videos to help you become a better welder. I'm Luke from WeldPro. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to see what you build with your TIG 200.